Hey, welcome back, guys and girls. Andy Pride here with Milk and Cookies Total War. And today I'll be casting the first subscriber replay sent to me by Labor Olavian. And in this battle, he is going to be commanding the Army of Syracuse, which consists of three mercenary veteran hoplites, four mercenary Belarus slingers, a picked hoplite on the general, three thorax swordsmen, two mercenary companion cav, and three Hippias Lancers and a couple of Peltas. And honestly, if I was playing as Syracuse right now, I think this is one of the strongest army setups you could bring with that faction. Now the reason that this army composition is so strong is that you get a really strong core of mercenary veteran hoplites, which are able to deal with a lot of sword units in melee combat and deal with cavalry as well. And the Thorax Swordsmen are going to be a flanking force in this battle. And you can see how effectively especially after the last patch, how effective Thorax Swordsmen are as a flanking force. They've actually become very strong swords. He also has a really nice range component with the four Mercenary Belarus Slingers and the two Peltas, and that's going to allow him to control the pace of the skirmish battle, and you're going to see him perform pretty well in that fact. Now, what you're going to see this battle is that the enemy army composition, especially on Carthage, is pretty weak. Now, this player, the Carthaginian player, has seven mercen actually no he doesn't he has a lot more than that. He has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine mercenary noble fighters, five Balearic slingers, and a general. He has no cavalry. Now Elite spamming in Rome 2 right now is not a very viable strategy. And you're gonna see that balance is a much more important thing in Rome 2 than being able to spam elite soldiers. Now, you look at his army composition, you look at his his melee composition specifically. Yeah, he has nine melee units that have 56 attack, high armor, good morale, but they cannot deal with cavalry at all. And one of the new units that came with Syracuse is a mercenary companion cav, which are sword killers, basically. They're a lot like the katana cav from Shogun 2. They absolutely shred through sword units, and most infantry units for that matter, if you get a rear charge off. So, I mean, 72 melee attack, 43 weapon damage on these guys, ridiculous cav unit, and Carthage has absolutely nothing to deal with them. So, he's in a lot of trouble. Just looking at that army composition from the start of this battle, he has a really bad one, and I don't think he's going to be able to deal with Syracuse very well. On the other hand, like I said, Olav, who's on Syracuse, has a ridiculously good army composition to deal with, Car what, with what Carthage is trying to bring. I think the Athenian player has a much better army composition. He has, I believe, five light hoplites and then four picked hoplites. I don't recommend this. What he's kind of done here is he's brought a lot of elite tier hoplites, and I think that picked hoplites at the moment are too expensive for what they're able to do. I don't think they're quite... They're not great for a core, just because they cost about 1,200 talents. And I think as a core infantry unit, it's a little too expensive. So if I was in the Athenian player's shoes, I probably would have brought Mercenary Veteran Hoplites. I think you get a lot of the benefits with those guys that you get with the picked Hoplites, but you don't have to pay as much money for it. And you still get the Inspire, which uh, is something that the Mercenary Veteran Hoplites have. They inspire nearby troops, which is a really good deal considering that I think they only cost like 850 talents. And these light hoplites, I've never actually brought them, I don't think, in any battle I've ever played. Certainly they can be used as an effective uh, backup force to your cavalry in a cav fight. They're absolutely very useful. But one-on-one -on -one in melee, they're not going to be able to last very long. They're just low-tier spears. So the Athenian player doesn't have a bad army composition at all, but I don't think it's fantastic. And we'll see how it all plays out. So let's get right into this replay now. We're going to see a skirmish fight break out right here. If I was Olav in this situation, I would not be trying to seek out a skirmish fight with the Balearic Slingers. I'd be trying to get into a position where I can kind of bait out my opponent. And obviously he's going to have to get into range of the Slingers to make his opponent come towards him. But he can't really win a skirmish battle if the Carthaginian player plays well. Because he has five Balearic Slingers and Olav only has four. So obviously not going to be able to win the skirmish fight super easily. But he does have his uh, Parthian foot archers, his ally, is actually already getting shredded in the skirmish fight. These Parthian foot archers are just not going to be able to deal with Rodian slingers. They're low tier archers, and just in general, I think slingers right now are a much better unit than uh, some of the archers in the game. The high tier archers, like Cretans, I think are definitely viable, but the lower tier archers I just don't think are very good. So the skirmish fight is going to begin in earnest here, and 
the Carthaginian player is actually doing a pretty decent job of focusing down one slinger unit. And at the moment, it doesn't actually look like that's what Olav is doing. Now, this was an interesting choice from the Athenian player, and not a very good one at that. He's going to send his uh, Hippias Lancers directly into the front of our Mercenary Hoplite, which was braced. So he's going to lose half that unit right off the bat, and then some more skirmish fire coming in is going to take that down to about half strength. So not super smart from the Athenian player. It might have just been a missed micro, but he's still missed microing his cav units, actually. And the cav fight up at the top has begun. Hippias Lancers are never going to be able to beat Royal Cataphracts 101 in melee. So, again, not very good use of his cavalry. But now the rush is going to begin. And we're going to see these nine mercenary noble fighters from the Carthaginian player come in. And he's basically just going to try to overwhelm Olav and the Syracuse forces. What Olav is going to do, though, and I really, really like this, is that he's going to keep his Thorax Swordsman in reserve on the flank and keep his hoplites in the center here. Now these hoplites are going to be able to hold out quite a while against the mercenary noble fighters. Swords generally beat spears, this is true, and they will in a prolonged melee fight be able to beat veteran hoplites if the veteran hoplites are left completely alone with no cavalry or other infantry support. The problem again is that Carthage doesn't have any spears and these two mercenary companion cav can make a huge impact on these sword units. So we're going to see him commit these noble fighters, and I think that Olaf did a great job here of not charging in his spears. I think bracing against the sword charge was probably the right choice. The kill rates on these veteran halpites are not going to be very high. They don't kill things very quickly. What they do is they survive, and they tank, and they hold the swords down long enough for cavalry to come in from the sides here. So. Another mistake the Carthaginian player is going to make is he's just going to send all of his sword units directly onto the spear walls, which, again, you might not take a lot of losses, but you need to save some to flank. And he actually has kept some on the flank here, so I assume he wanted to flank, but flanking is not an option for the Carthaginian player because he kept all these guys in reserve. So the Companion Cavalry and the Thorax Swordsmen are going to get committed pretty soon here. I think he could have gone in straight against these Mercenary Noble Fighters as they charged in, and gotten a really nice charge off with the Cav, but instead he's going to tie them down with the Thorax Swordsman, and I think that's still a fine choice. Again, Thorax Swordsman not going to win this fight. They're already down to about two-thirds strength, but they're just holding them down in time for the Cavalry to flank. And he still has his Skirmishers firing in, and Parthia is rolling all over Athens at this point. But we should focus on the Carthaginian and the Syracuse players for now. So the melee fight is has begun now. And I think he has done a pretty good job with his positioning of his troops. Olav, that is. And he's bought time for the cavalry to come around. And this is going to be massive. Because the skirmishers are completely unsupported. No spears, not even a sword unit back there to protect them. And so this is... Each Balearic Slinger is about 550 talents. Multiply that by 5. That's 2,500 or so talents down the drain in a couple of seconds because he left them unsupported. So these guys didn't actually get very many kills either. 24, 16, and 6. Not a good cost investment at all. And actually he already got a rear charge off with one mercenary companion cav into the rear of these mercenary noble fighters. And this is going to cause a chain route. These guys should not be routing. They're almost at full strength. But they're unsupported and they know that their rear is completely exposed. And it's going to cause a chain route, and all of these mercenary noble fighters, all these Iberian troops for the Carthaginians, are just going to route. So, I think that's a pretty good example of why you need to bring balanced armies in this game. I realize that it was not a amazing battle. Like, certainly, I don't think the uh, Carthaginian player played well at all. But I think it's a really good demonstration of the fact that balance and bringing spear units and cavalry is very important in this game, especially right now in this meta. You absolutely need to have spear units, because when Rome 2 first came out, and I remember this, it kind of pissed me off about the game. Uh, in fact, you can even see it as uh, recently as the first scan and Intel tournament, where I played Prince of Macedon and Air of Carthage and us, uh, Point Man and some of those other players, is that you didn't have to bring spears when when the game was in that state. Spears basically did not make any impact against cavalry at all. 
you could get away with only bringing swords and cavalry and range units. But there was, I don't remember what patch it was, but one of the patches not that long ago actually made, I mean maybe like four or five patches ago, actually made spears kill cavalry. And of course the game should have shipped like that. It didn't. But there was a point in time where you basically didn't need to bring spears at all to counter cavalry, which I thought was very silly. And now that Cavalry is such a prominent force on the battlefield, and now that spears can actually kill them, you absolutely need to bring some. So I think if the Carthaginian player had maybe only brought four mercenary noble fighters and then kept some Libyan hoplites or some African pikemen in reserve, you would have had a much better army composition here. In this case, he ended up spamming elite troops that cost around 1,200 talents. Not cost-effective use of his troops at all. He had nothing to deal with cavalry. He got absolutely raffle stomped. And I think the balance that you saw on Olaf's side was really good and indicative of how the metagame has uh, shifted towards more balanced armies. The companion cav didn't get a ton of kills. I mean, 84 and 66 is really good, but it was that morale shock. All those cavalry coming in from the rear caused a chain route, and these guys just... They didn't stand a chance. They just ran. So I thought that was really well played by Olav's Warrior. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I don't know how many... I think there are only like one or two more subscriber replays that aren't corrupted. So I'll take a look at those. See what I can do. Uh, and I don't have a lot of replays myself either. I really haven't been playing Room 2 that much. So we'll see what I end up uh, uploading soon. And other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I'll talk to you all later. See ya.